Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at rates of change. Distance can be written as um, displacement and um, velocity can often be referred to in your question as speed. Uh, similar but slightly different and the last one of them would be referred to as acceleration yeah the last one is acceleration so those three things that we're going to be looking at and uh, we've already seen this when we're looking at differentiation uh, so we said that if you're given the distance and asked to find the velocity that you had to do the y by the x and if you're given the velocity and asked to write the acceleration uh, to find the acceleration you had to do the y by the x and because we said that um um, integration is the opposite of differentiation then this time we'll be walking backwards so we might be giving the acceleration and ask to look for the velocity or we might be giving the velocity and ask to look for the speed speed or we might even be giving the acceleration and ask to find uh, the the displacement in which case we have to uh, do integration so if you're giving the acceleration and ask to find the velocity we want to integrate and if you're giving the uh, velocity or the speed and ask to find the distance you have to integrate if you're giving the acceleration and ask to find the displacement straight away you have to integrate and integrate again so i'm going to give you some time just to uh, make this little chat in your book and then we can then have a look at some examples I hope you copied that down and you have that somewhere where you can make reference to it now. Um, now, let's have a look at this example. It says the velocity of a moving body is 90 squared minus 8 meters per second after a time t seconds. Find the distance traveled by the body at the end of 5 seconds. Now, don't worry about all that, everything that has been written there. It may look overwhelming at first, but what you want to do is you want to underline the keywords. So, it says the velocity, yeah, it's giving you the velocity, yeah, of a moving body to be 90 squared minus 8. Uh, that's the velocity. And it says find the distance. Again, if you look at your chart, I said that when you were given the velocity and asked to find the distance, then you have to integrate. And this looks like a definite uh, a definite integral problem because it says that, um, that we should find the distance after five seconds, at the end of five seconds. So if we write that as integrating, going from zero to five, yeah, uh, nine t squared minus eight, dt the then we can definitely work out that distance using the definite integral so let's do that if we integrate this we are going to have um 90 squared would give us a uh, 9 t to the power of 3 over 3 minus 8 would give us um 8 t and that will be going from 0 to 5. And all we have to do now is substitute when uh, t equals 5 and when t equals 0. And do the subtraction as usual. So let's do that. Um, that would be 9 times 5 cubed over 3 minus 8 times 5. Minus 9 times 0 cubed over 3 minus 8 times 0 and if you put that into your calculator this is definitely going to come to 0 and I'm just going to give you time to put that into your calculator now and see what that gives you putting that into your calculator will definitely give you um, 335 meters okay if it's distance it's going to be meters if it doesn't give you the, the units you have to just say units if it doesn't give you the unit square for velocity you just gotta say <laughs> unit square okay in place of the units you gotta put uh, put put units to represent whatever unit is, is meant to be uh here's another example it says uh the velocity of a moving body is 10 t to the power of 4 minus 75 t meters per second after a time of t seconds find the displacement at the end of three seconds so um it's giving you the velocity and it's asking you to find the displacement so you've got to integrate yeah so um this time you want to assume that the initial velocity is um zero so you'll, you'll be going from um 
0 to 3, integrating from 0 to 3, uh, 10 t to the power of 4 minus 75 t dt, yeah? And if we integrate that, that's going to definitely give us the solution to that problem. If we integrate this, we're going to get, um, this would give you uh, 10 t to the power of 5 over 5, yeah? Because you have to add 1 to the, you have to always remember to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Minus 75 t to the power of 2, this is to the power of 1, so we have to add 1 to that. 1 plus 1 is 2 over 2. Um, and this time we're going to just change the notation to um, going from 0 to um, 5, yeah? And then when you've done that, all you have to do now is to um, substitute when t is equal to 5 and when t is equal to 0. And then do the subtraction to find the, the, the displacement. So that's going to be 10 times 5 to the power of 5 over 5 minus 75 times 5 squared over 2 minus, let's put this in a bracket, minus, uh, if you put 10 times 0 to the power of 5 over 5 minus 75 times 0 squared over 2, yeah, that whole part there is going to come to 0 and so we only have to do this part because whatever we get there is going to come to, to 0 because you've got the zeros going on. If we put this part into our calculator, we're going to end up with 148.5 minus zero. That's just 148 meters per second. Ooh. the answer to that one now this last example says the acceleration of a moving body at the end of t seconds from the start of motion is 9 minus t meters per second square 9 minus t meters per second square yeah uh the first question this is find the velocity after six seconds if the initial velocity is nine meters per second we cannot solve this problem the same way as we solved the other problem because we do not have enough information to be able to do it using the definite integral. We have to be able to write uh, an equation for the velocity first. And to write that equation, we have to find the integration constant C first of all, before we can then write that equation for the velocity. And then when we've written the equation, then we can find the velocity when it is equal to... Um, we can find the velocity after six seconds, yeah? So the first step to solving this problem would be to integrate. If we integrate 9, we're going to get 9t. So um, let, let me put that there, yeah? So if we integrate 9, we're going to have 9t. And if we integrate uh, minus t squared, we're going to have uh, minus t. We're going to have minus t squared over 2, yeah? But we have to add the integration constant c because we don't know what that is yeah it's we don't know what it is so we have to start off by writing the finding the integration constant at the initial velocity yeah when it was nine meters per second then it must have been zero for the time because the initial velocity there was no it was a zero time then so we're going to substitute uh v equals z uh, nine and t equals zero uh, we'll have 9 times 0 minus 0 squared over 2 plus uh, C. And 9 would then be equal to, uh, these are all going to come to 0. Or C would then be equal to, C would be equal to 9. Now to find that velocity, yeah, to find this velocity, V would then be equal to 9 times uh we said to look for it after six seconds six minus six squared over two plus c is equal to nine nine and you're going to put this into your calculator you should be yeah. able to put all of that into your calculator and i think that should give you um 42 yeah 42 meters per second for velocity 
the second part to that problem says to find the distance traveled by the body after eight seconds now you have to integrate again to be able to find that distance um if you had that v is equal to um nine minus t squared over two 90 minus t squared over 2 then if you integrate that again to get the distance yeah then that will be if you integrate 9t minus t squared over 2 that's going to give you um 9t squared over 2 minus t to the power of 3 over 3 yeah plus c but c must be equal to 0 so substituting when the time is 8 seconds, let's say the distance is equal to S, then S would be equal to 9 times 8 squared over 2 minus uh, 8 cubed over 3. Uh, if you put that into your calculator, let's see what that gives you. Uh, I think that's where we're going to end it. Um, in your exams, you're likely to get a velocity problem or maybe um, a distance problem. You're likely to see this type of problem where you have the acceleration and being asked to find the distance and or the velocity. Or you might be given the velocity and asked to find the distance. So you have to look out for those types and practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Thank you for watching and I shall see you in the next one.